Intel Arc is Intel's new dedicated graphics card line, aimed at competing in the discrete GPU market dominated by Nvidia and AMD. But is it the first time that Intel has tried to break through to this market? The answer is a resounding no. In 1998, Intel released its very first GPU, Intel i740. But how does this attempt compare to the latest one? Let's find out. Of course, it doesn't make sense to compare the performance of a quarter-century-old graphics card to the recent ones. So we'll evaluate how well they match up to their respective contemporaries, perform on the market and how they generally feel to use. Let's see the contestants. In 1998, Intel partnered with Real3D, Lockheed Martin's spin-off company known as makers of Sega's 3D graphics. The duo released a card that had some quite high expectations, Intel i740. At first, when it came to the market, the card performed ok relative to the competitors' cards. However, a few months in, ATI released Rage 128 and Nvidia released TNT, which made this card pretty obsolete. If you were not going for the very best with Voodoo 2, you had other options for unified 2D and 3D solution. There were better and more affordable cards, and the i740 simply wasn't the product you'd bet on in such a competitive market. While software support could have been better, it was fine enough. The card had other architectural issues. It had low memory capacity, but the hope was that accessing RAM over the very fast AGP interface would suffice. Due to the poor performance of the i740 and its follow-up i752, Intel abandoned the discrete graphics market. Real 3D was shut down and its assets were sold to Intel. The bulk of its engineers ended up in ATI. Chips were repurposed as integrated graphics chips in Intel 810 and Intel 815 chipsets. Intel has since continuously developed integrated graphics making it the third largest graphics chip designer company. In fact, with chipset and CPU integrated graphics, Intel has been in this game for more than a quarter of a century. In 2020, Intel formed the Intel Graphics Team under the leadership of Raja Koduri of AMD Radeon fame, a notable figure in the GPU industry to spearhead the development of Intel's discrete graphics products. After many delays in 2022, Intel Arc Alchemist graphics cards A750 and A770 finally got to the market. The one we have here is Intel Arc A750 Limited Edition, a reference card from Intel. It sports a 256-bit bus with 8GB of GDDR6 memory and has a hefty TDP of 225 watts. The Limited Edition has a dual fan design and a slick and slimmer frame than usual, but the cards are still pretty large. It requires an 8-pin and a 6-pin PCIe extra power connectors, which makes sense considering its power usage. At launch, most of the reviews noted issues with driver stability and optimization, which impacted performance consistency and compatibility with a range of games and software. Intel addressed these issues through ongoing driver updates and optimizations. That's it for the brief history of these cards, but how do they perform? We benchmarked the i740 and its rivals on Intel Pentium 3 933MHz on Asus CUV4X-M with 512MB of SD RAM 100MHz memory. We compared it to NVIDIA Riva 128 and Riva TNT, ATI Rage 128 Pro and Matrix Millennium G200 LE. All cards were tested on Windows 98 with the latest available drivers for each card. Quake 2 is not a good start for our Intel Aspirant, as it is outperformed by each of its competitors. Outliers were Riva 128 not working on maximum details and Millennium weirdly not working on the low preset. Even though performance is not good, it's serviceable and the game is playable up to the high preset. In Half-Life on OpenGL, as DirectX barely even worked on all of the cards, the i740 performed quite well. Easily outperforming Riva 128, the game can be considered playable with this card even on the high preset. Millennium barely beats it, while TNT and Rage 128 are in a league of their own here. 
i740 is once again utterly destroyed in Quake 3 Arena. Even Riva 128, when it decided to work on a specific preset, managed to squeeze out more performance. Millennium has once again decided that the low preset was for the peasants, while fumbling its high and very high preset performance. Riva TNT and Rage 128 made the i740 look like a dollar store GPU. Grand Theft Auto 3 was too much for our Intel aspirant, as it didn't manage to go past the menu screen. Other cards besides i740 and Riva 128 didn't have much performance to show either, but hell, at least they managed to run the game. Just how inadequate i740 performance feels can be seen in 3D Mark synthetic benchmarks. If we overlooked its performance, i740 worked fine enough. Its drivers work just right, the software is rudimentary but serviceable. It didn't show any display problems, and less demanding games work just fine. We tested A750 with 101.5590 drivers from June of this year, as that's when we conducted our testing. All runs were conducted on freshly installed Windows 10 with the latest available drivers at the time. A750 and its rivals were tested on AMD Ryzen 5600 on Gigabyte B450M-DS3H with 32GB of DDR4 3200MHz memory. We compared it to the pricier NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 12GB and the legendary second-hand market champion GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. Considering their prices, memory, age and market placement, we decided to test these cards in games at 1080p resolution. In the same vein as the i740 required faster access to RAM, the a750 requires a resizable bar for its maximum potential. Resizable bar or rebar or SAM smart access memory for AMD is a PCIe feature that allows the CPU greater access to the available VRAM. Enabling this will speed up a lot of processes that would require buffering otherwise, and usually grants extra performance. Intel Arc cards depend heavily on this feature, as their architecture is built considering its existence. We'll provide both resizable bar on and off results for Arc A750 in our charts. In Horizon Zero Dawn, A750 ended up at the bottom of the chart, even with rebar enabled. RTX 3060 slightly edges out the older GTX 1080 Ti. All of the cards can provide us with 60 plus FPS performance on the ultimate quality preset. On another horizon, Forza Horizon 5, we get a somewhat similar story. Expect a multitude of problems we experienced with the ARC card. We had a lot of crashes running this game's built-in benchmark at least once per two runs. Even if we put that aside, we had weird artifacting when anti-aliasing was enabled. After painful crash-plagued testing and rerunning it with AA disabled, the A750 performance was subpar. Performance-wise, this game is perfectly playable, but stability on ARC is a different story. We would not recommend ARC for this game. The story is quite different in Guardians of the Galaxy, as for the first time A750 shows slightly better performance than the GTX 1080 Ti. Until the ultimate preset, however, where 1080's larger 11GB memory gives it an edge. RTX 3060 is still undisputed here, which makes sense considering its higher price. In Cyberpunk, Intel Arc A750 scores its first true victory over the legendary one. However, we do see some artifacting when we change video settings with the ARC card. In Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, GTX 1080 Ti outmaneuvers both A750 and RTX 3060 and takes its crown. While it's barely a victory compared to the RTX 3060, the A750 is left far behind. Lagging behind the other two, the A750 was producing sad coil whine noises akin to the dying RX 580 we tested in our top 10 video. In 3D Mark, Time Spy and Still Nomad, we see some of Arc A750's promised theoretical performance. In total, it seems that the Intel drivers, which got much better since the release, still have some distance to cover. 
On one side we have the i740, a perfectly working card with a somewhat steep price and underwhelming performance. On the other, the A750 is a trouble product with competitive performance compared to its price and still, years later, very unstable. To be fair, joining the discrete GPU market in this day and age and being competitive as ARC is, is nothing short of a miracle. But the question stands, is it enough? If you're considering A750, we would recommend against it and point you to AMD Radeon RX 6600 XT. Even AMD being very competitive in raster performance, following Nvidia closely in ray tracing and upscaling is struggling. Even though it is not the most precise source of information, if we take a look at the Steam hardware survey, the GPU percentage is very very green. Another alternative might come from the used market as GTX 1080 Ti can be had for half the price of a new ARC A750. The Pioneer i740 was late to the market considering how badly it was beaten by other cards from 1998. It wasn't Voodoo, it wasn't TNT and it wasn't the product that establishes a company on the market. It was followed by barely an upgrade in the form of i752 and it ultimately failed. But it did give birth to something new, Intel's integrated GPUs. The same ones you see have 7 to 8% in the Steam hardware survey. Rest assured those are not ARC cards. As for ARC drivers, they are constantly being improved. Someday we might have a retrospective using the latest available drivers and see performance far better than what RTX 3060 provides. 3D Mark results sure do give us some hope, but at this pace, at that point, this card will be long deprecated. We went optimistically into this testing, only to be disappointed by both i740 and a750. i740 had a bad follow-up and we're yet to see the next ARC generation, Battle Mage. Intel missed an opportunity with Alchemist and GPU shortage. Let's hope they don't miss their second shot. If they do, our dream of a competitive GPU market with three key players may truly and finally be dead. As for this matchup result, we give the victory to i740. Barely a victory in this sad competition. However, let's not lose hope. Battle Mage may yet surprise us. At least we had some fun getting disappointed. Hopefully you did as well. See you around! Battle Mage Battle Mage Battle Mage Battle Mage Battle Mage Battle Mage